Well, hello there, and welcome to a Minecraft showcase. So, what am I showing you? Um, I'm actually just going to show you a little bit of an update, or more of an elaboration, on a video I made before about using the structure blocks from 1.10 to create random number generators. Now, in that video, which I will link to in the description below, I showed you how to use these impulse command blocks um, set to not need redstone in a structure that we've saved so that every time we load the structure with a lower than one integrity it will pick a random number so in this case i'm showing you that it doesn't have to be a number it doesn't have to go on the scoreboard you can use this to randomize anything and i'm showing that off in this case by randomizing the structure that's being loaded over here so basically we have a structure that's loading command blocks that's loading another structure um, and so I want to show you how that works. So basically, and let me get back into game mode one here. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Um, so what I have here are command blocks. And over here, I have a structure block. Now this structure block is set to load, in this case, wood one. Now, I've created a separate structure for each of the woods. Now, obviously... Just having the two block tall pile of logs, not very interesting, but you can extend this to any structures you want, with any size and any contents. Um, this is just showing you how to randomize the structures. So in this case, I've just created one of each of the wood types, and I've saved them as structures called wood 1, wood 2, wood 3, etc., up to wood 6. And then I've set this block to load mode. And so what that's going to do is if this is set to wood one, when I load it, it's going to load this. If, I, if it's set to wood two, it'll load birch, I think. Wood three, it'll load spruce, etc. And so these command blocks all change the value of this structure name in this block. And the way they do that is by using the block data tag. Now, I'm also using an execute command here to execute off of the armor stand named struct, which is this guy right here. Um, this guy is just an armor stand named struct that just allows me to, um, to find this particular structure block, no matter where the command block is executing from. It just makes the code a little neater. I can just copy and paste them all instead of having to change any offsets. And if I move them around, it'll still work. But that's beside the point. Um, the important thing is that I can find this particular structure block from anywhere by executing off of the armor stand. So we execute off the armor stand and we set the block data of the block one below the armor stand, which obviously right below the armor stand is our structure block. And we set the name value. In this case, we set it to wood one. In this case, we set it to wood two. And so you will find the pattern is pretty consistent. Wood 3, Wood 4, etc., up to Wood 6. And that name actually changes the structure name that's right here. So, we have the same thing that we did before with our um, random number generator, where all of these impulse command blocks are set to always active, so that as soon as they're placed in the world, they run their commands. And then we would save those in a structure, which I just called random struct, um, and we're setting the load for that random structure to have an integrity of 0.5. So each one of these will have a 50% chance of not loading. And so there's something that's important, which is all of these are basically competing to set a single value. Whereas before we were adding all of these values together, so they all added to, you know, didn't matter what order they came in, um, they would just add their values to the scoreboard. In this case, we're not adding values, we're setting the value of the name here. So the order in which these are executed actually does matter. Because let's say that all of these came in at the same time. So not 0.5 integrity, but 1.0. So all of these load in at the same time, this one sets it to wood one, this one sets it to wood two, this one sets it to wood three, etc. So what happens? And that depends on the order. In the end, whichever one of these executed last 
is going to be the final value of the structure name here. Um, and so Minecraft has a way of determining the order that block updates occur. I don't really know what it is. I think that it's just whichever one has the lowest coordinates um, gets executed first and it does some kind of scan lines. I'm not entirely sure though, so don't quote me on that. The important thing is there is a set order. And so that means that if all of these were loaded in at the same time, you'd always get the same consistent output in this structure block. And that also means that basically, like let's say it's loading from left to right. I don't know if it is, but let's say it is. Then the result in this block will be the furthest right command block that gets loaded in when the structure loads. And so since each one has a 50% chance, that means it could be this one, or it could be that one if this one doesn't load, or it could be this one if these two don't load, or it could be this one if these three don't load, it could be this one if these four don't load, etc. Now what that does mean is that there's a higher chance of one side of these getting executed than the other. Because all of the ones after it can't load in. And the further you are, you know, the, the earlier you're loaded, the more there are to load after. So it's not uniformly random. It's actually, you know, weighted more heavily towards the earlier ones. Um, but that's fine because it's still ultimately random, just not uniformly. Uh, which should be good for most uses when you're loading in structures. So anyway, so these are the guys all fight. Whichever one is loaded last. Uh, when the structure is loaded, sets this name value. And then we just take the same signal that triggered this command blocks thing to load in, uh, also comes in here and turns this off. So then when this turns off, this turns on. So this, this thing right here is just a comparator with a full signal in the back, and it's set to subtract mode. And it takes the signal from the structure block here and inverts it. And the reason I'm using a comparator instead of a torch is that this clock would be too fast and the torch would burn out. So instead I'm using a comparator, which won't burn out. So it just inverts the signal so that it'll load in these command blocks. And then right after that, when it's not loading in these command blocks, it'll load in the structure. Um, and of course, these command blocks will change which structure is loaded by changing the name. So, yeah, not very difficult. So, in the end, you get exactly this. Um, and of course, if I'm in game mode 2, game mode 2, I said game mode 2, uh, then I won't see the borders um, from the structure blocks. And I can't access them, obviously, and I can't break them. So, yeah. Um, again, you can use this for other things besides wood, and you should use this for other things besides wood. Maybe use it to generate a maze randomly by creating parts of the maze and then just randomly picking them. You know, because again, this doesn't have to be on a clock. I just put it on a clock so you can see the randomness very easily. Um, but this can trigger whenever you want it to. So you can have it just like when the player starts a game, load a new maze or something and randomize it. Stuff like that. So this kind of shows you a use for that technique of randomizing stuff with um, command blocks in low integrity structures. Uh, and it also shows you a sort of symbiotic relationship between structure blocks and command blocks. And what I mean by that is that so command blocks and structure bo blocks <clears throat> excuse me command blocks and structure blocks are uh, are the only blocks that are creative mode only and that you can't find in the creative menu. So you have to give them to yourself with commands. And that's because they're both specifically supposed to be map makers tools. And in this you know, demonstration, I hope it shows that they should really be used together. They're not two separate entities. You should use your command blocks to determine what structure blocks you're going to use. And you should use your structure blocks to determine which command blocks are going to execute. Or, you know, not necessarily that. That's how it works in this case. But 
Point is, you should use them together and not just sort of as separate entities in the same map. Make sure they work together and you can make some amazing things. So, yeah. So until next time, wait, let me do this properly. Until next time, keep randomizing your structures and keep redstoning.